Michael Gordon was on holiday in 2005, wandering up the track on Mount Monganui, when he had to rub his eyes to take in what he was seeing. Walking down straight towards him, arm in arm with a strange lady, was his younger brother Harry, or at least someone who looked identical to him. The last time they'd spoken was five years earlier. Is that really you? He inquired of his brother, or an exact look-alike. Matter-of-factly, Harry replied, Of course it is. But look, it's not convenient to talk now. I'll call you in a few days. And the two brothers parted. When the lady accompanying Harry inquired as to who was that, Harry explained, Just an old friend. Michael was left stunned, stranded to the spot. The man who he had just met was indeed his brother. Only Harry died five years earlier in a boating accident 250 kilometres north of Sydney. After that chance meeting, Harry now knew time was ticking and his sham was about to be exposed. His madcap scheme was unwinding to the end of the reel one that had begun to unwind the very night he fakes his death in a runabout accident he staged in June 2000, escaping the scene in a camper van stashed with $100,000 in cash, never to be seen again, well at least in front of the people not in the know. Fake disappearances have one motive, life insurance. Harry had a policy with AMP for $3.5 million. The two recipients, his wife Sheila and daughter Josephine. What a stroke of luck for both of those people. Harry had taken this massive cover just two months before he had died. And a dead parrot he was, at least according to the inquest. Only AMP weren't that convinced that Harry had snuffed it. They paid out a paltry 25 grand pending a body. The police also smelled a rat, undertook an investigation into the death christened Strike Force Rebellion. Over the years, Michael had been consoling Sheila about the death of her husband and his brother. And the grieving widow was the first person at the bigger bro contacted with the amazing news. Harry wasn't dead. He was alive. This didn't come as a surprise or revelation to her. More of a, oh shit, this has gone pear-shaped line of conversation. Mrs Gordon knew full well he was alive and kicking. She had travelled overseas to meet her dead hubby on more than one occasion. So had their daughter, Josephine. She would even bring the grandkids to visit. It was Josephine that had reported him missing and suspiciously announced his death just two days after the accident, still whilst they were dragging Port Stevens for the body, back when Harry began his five years on the run. Far from going back to the relative safety of his native New Zealand, where he could blend in seamlessly with society, immediately after he staged the boat accident, he'd begun globetrotting. Spain, Germany, the UK, to mention a few, picking up odd jobs here and there for the first couple of years. Kindly note at this point, just one sec, this story reminds me of another Aussie Kiwi one I've done previously, in which Grant Mitchell spent quarter of a century on the run until he came a cropper when he crashed into a kangaroo. There's a link in the description. Now back into it. In 2003, Harry Gordon arrived into New Zealand under a false name and passport, aged 54. A passport he went to extremes to obtain, even using blue contacts to change his eye colour. Customs and his workmates at versatile garages in Auckland knew him as Robert Motzel, as did his fiancée, the woman accompanying him on that fateful day on the mount. The lady, just about to become wife number two, was Christine Newsom. Shortly after the mount, 
they underwent a bigamist marriage north of Auckland. Whilst that very moment over in Sydney, his legal wife, Sheila, had cracked under police questioning after Michael's meeting of Lazarus came to light. And finding out her hubby was now shacked up with another woman, and she was on the outer, would probably doubtless have loosened her lips as well. The Aussie coppers now knew of the fake death, insurance fraud, and the whole kit and caboodle. They knew where he lived. Authorities on this side of the Tasman were made aware that Robert Motzel was in fact Harry Gordon and travelling under a false passport. And that f- little fact made it rather awkward when it came to the couple returning back to Auckland from a honeymoon in Rarotonga. Christine was permitted on the flight home, but the man she knew as Rob was left stranded in the Cooks for a month. Part of the subterfuge Gordon slash Motzel hid under when asked about his past was that he was under a witness protection scheme. And if that failed to convince, he had fled Australia to start a new life after a shady deal with the Russian mafia turned sour and he wasn't keen on them catching up with him. After some legal wrangling, Harry Gordon arrived back in New Zealand with a lot of explaining to do facing a newly minted wife on the warpath. His past had caught up with him big time. Off he now went back to Australia, using his real passport to sort things out, telling his workmates at Versatile in New Zealand, I'm going to Australia to tie up some loose ends. Those loose ends started the moment he touched down, in the form of handcuffs, which were slapped around his wrist by the waiting police. It was now November 2005, and just over three months after meeting his brother, he was now in custody, facing charges of conspiracy to defraud. A jail sentence was inevitable. At the trial, Australian police produced seized documents from his house in New Zealand. Calculations as to the compound interest on 3.5 million, along with a motivational memo to himself for the year, Get insurance money and don't get caught. I mean nothing incriminating. 15 months was all he got. He spent his time inside writing a book in which he claimed his wife and daughter weren't involved. By then Sheila had already pled guilty and was sentenced to five months home detention. The daughter, who is now living in the UK, escaped prosecution, at least for now. When he got out of the slammer, he, surprise, surprise, reunited with Christine, who had forgiven him. Evidently she hadn't heard of findsomeonenormal.co.nz. Taps fingers half expecting woman's weekly front page expose. Then they both walked down the aisle together for the second time. Doubtless she was delighted she was finally legally married. And if you want to read A good piece of light fiction in the vein of David Irving meets The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, Harry Gordon's book is on the screen. Robert Motzel's as well. And don't forget to take a look at Grant Mitchell's Disappearing Act in the other video I did. Another great hoot. And if there were to be a prolonged lack of updates on this channel, blame it on the Ukrainian Mafia. Dusi Daniel.